Okay, welcome back to uh, turbine install in a free wing T33. I think this is episode three. Um, let me cover a couple things real quick that I might have missed on the uh, first two. Um, these are 65 millimeter JP brakes. I've had some people wanting to know why they're 45s, but you need to order 65 millimeters with the four millimeter axle. Um, it's gonna make life really easy if that's what you get. Um, and since the last video, I've bonded on um, that little tank receptacle that we made. Uh, when I pulled the release packing tape off, it did peel the paint. For some reason, this paint just doesn't stick good at all to the foam. Um, so I scuffed the bottom of this and uh, put it down with E6000 and uh, everything seems to be working well. And one thing I did forget to mention the other day is you got to slightly bevel the foam in this area uh, to get the tank to fit right. Um, it's no big thing at all. And then I did have to kind of flatten this out here so that the tank is nice and happy also. Um, that's another reason where if you do use servo extensions, I mean, uh, real estate's going to be very tight in that area. Um, so tonight... What we're going to do is um, we're going to locate the turbine and tailpipe by uh, installing these rails. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Uh, we're going to do it on this uh, aircraft over here. Um, I made up a, well, first of all, the tank is pretty much set in its location now. So uh, I want to locate the turbine. Oh, about an eighth inch back from the uh, tank. And then the tailpipe is going to be mounted. Once again, you want like a one inch gap between where the pipe starts and the uh, end of the cone here. So uh, I pretty much know where that's going to be. So engine's going to go there. Tailpipe is going to mount. Pretty much right in line with these screws that's a good location for it. So um, I'm going to show you how you get the rails mounted. Out of here. Oh and why I'm thinking of it, this is the pipe we did in the first episode. We put the uh, mounting tabs on um, with JB Weld. I let it dry. Um, installed two, I like to put in rivets here, a solid rivets. You can screw it on, do whatever you want. Um, I like to use these rivets. They're um, aircraft rivets. The number is uh, MS20470A, 4-4s. Four um, I'm going to start including these in the um, install kit who purchases them. Now let me show you how you just put these in. Um, I like to put the head on the inside, and these are these are fairly soft rivets. I use a uh, it's called a Nipex pliers where the uh, the jaws move parallel to each other, and you just pretty much squeeze them. You know, that ain't going nowhere. Um, it's it's probably overkill. You really don't even need it, but I like to have something there. And then I, I cut these to the approximate width that you need, and now just install with a uh, number four sheet metal screw into the eighth inch plywood. Okay, so let's talk about mounting the rails. Um, I make up a little fixture here. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I want the rails between this black mark and this black mark. I kind of determined that when I was setting in the, uh, the turbine and tailpipe. So I made this uh, little fixture here. It's just out of uh, quarter inch plywood. And I uh, screw this down to the existing EDF mount that's in the model because that's pretty much on the, uh, I'm gonna use aircraft terminology here. It's on like the correct water line that I want the uh, engine and tailpipe to be mounted on. 
So I'm going to screw this down fairly tight. And you notice the uh, this is pretty much parallel here and there, okay? So the way I'm going to cut a slot for a piece of eighth inch plywood, this is what we're going to insert into the foam there. I'm going to take a, uh, I'll get to find it here first. There it is. I like to use a uh, piece of 532nd music wire. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to hold it underneath here and I'm going to follow along here and I'm going to start it at that line and finish it at this line. Um, it's probably going to take about two to three times because the wire does cool off. And I'm using a pair of vice grips here that's going to ride up against the surface. And that's going to control my depth because I don't want to go in too far, but I want to go in far enough. So I figure that's, that's far enough. So I'm going to start there, finish here. Um, I just... I kind of made this tool last night. I wasn't happy with the one that I did on that model. So uh, I did this side already. So we're gonna do this side and uh, see how it works out. So I just heat it up with a propane torch. And I like to use the, uh, the undersized wire. I don't wanna use a piece of eighth inch music wire because it's gonna melt in and create a slot that's a little bit wider than an eighth inch. So uh, that's why I use the undersized. It's going to melt a little bit on top and bottom of the wire. And an uh, eighth inch fits pretty good. I'd rather have to sand a little bit than have too sloppy of a fit. So I'm going to heat, turn on the torch, and heat up the music wire. And you don't want to get it red hot. We're going to practice on a, the chunk of foam that we took out on the, uh, uh, for the uh, inlet spike. So I'm just going to heat that up here. You want it to turn a little bit blue, but not, not red hot. So if you watch this here, you know, it's going to... So it starts to cool off after a while, and then you just got to reheat it. So, you know, the plywood fits that the one I cut of this one. And the plywood fits in there pretty good and uh, it'll bond in fine. So we're ready to go here. So the trick to this is to keep it held up tight against the plywood, but you want to kind of, don't want to go rocking on it. Um, so just practice on a piece of scrap and get uh, comfortable with it before you do it. I'm going to heat it up here. I'm going to start at that line. Okay, it's starting to cool off. Heat it up again. You know, some people like to router these in. It's whatever your personal preference is. Okay, that's all the way down. So I'm going to just do a, heat it up one more time and just do a pass all the way down. Okay. Screw this. It 
doesn't look too bad. So, let me see here. We got another piece of plywood here. Let me see one. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is the one I did yesterday. Um, inserts in there like that. So, I drew a line there. That's all the all the plywood that's inserted into the foam. I mean, it's way way strong enough. And let's see what we got over here. Looks good to me. Okay, so let me draw a little pencil line right there. Let me find a pencil. Okay, we'll put an arrow on there. Okay, so now we got the uh, two rails in there. We need to cut them down to the appropriate width so that the engine fits in there. The way I like to do this, I got a pretty good technique for that. Um, I just take a, a dial caliper. This is this will be the um, this is basically the top of the engine. The airplane's upside down, so I just measure measure the screws there. Okay, I got oh about two point eight. Eight zero. Okay, so I'm gonna make a. I made a piece of a poster board. No, it's two point seven eight eight zero. So I made a, a piece of poster board just a little bit wider than that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then? I'm gonna lay this in there, and I like to line up this center line with the uh, the glue joint on the model which is, I consider, butt line zero, like that. And you want to want to pretty much have equal gaps there and there because, I mean, this foam, it's, it's pretty much right on side to side. Once we get that where we want it, I'm just going to draw, draw a pencil line there. Okay. And now the tailpipe. I got a little, little piece of poster board here. I got that the same width as the uh, the bell mouth right there. Okay. So why it's in there? I'm going to draw a line for that too. Okay, so I know the tailpipe is going to be pretty much butted up to these because that's the way it was on the uh, original prototype. So now I'm going to just bandsaw off all this right here. Okay, give me a second to do that. See, I mean, the plywood fits in there really snug. I mean, it, it works out really well.
Okay. Got the rails there. Engine's going to mount just about like that. Okay. And then let me shove the tailpipe in there. like that. Now you can do one of two things. Before we bond them in, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a little angle right there. It's because you don't need that plywood. And um, you can do one of two things. You can drill them now or you can uh, bond in your wood and then drill them after they're bonded in. It's, it all depends what you want to do. Personally, I'm gonna bond them in. If I'm happy with the location, I'm gonna bond them in and then drill it after the glue dries. One thing you want to do before you bond these in, and let's, let's look at the tailpipe there. The tailpipe, if everything worked out the way I thought it should be, the tailpipe should be let me grab a flashlight. Should be pretty much centered on the engine. Um, let me take a look at it here. Let me look here, Matthew. It looks pretty good. Um, what I do to line the tailpipe up with the engine is I just pretty much eyeball around it and, and center the screws for the uh, engine inside the tailpipe. I mean, it's... It, it, it's fine. If you got to shim the engine up a 64th or the tailpipe up a 64th, it's no big thing. Just slide a little piece of wood in and, and shim it. So I'm pretty much hit with happy with this location. It didn't take no time at all. Um, I'll probably do a little, uh, another little bandsaw cut in this area here, take off some of that unnecessary lumber laying around, bond them in, then drill them for a number four sheet metal screw. And what I like to do is, after you thread in the screw, soak the threads with some thin CA, let it dry, and uh, it, you know, it, it turns rock hard. One thing you wanna do before you bond in these rails is, I talked about it briefly before, is this little ridge here that they have for the uh, EDF fan, you want to block plane them out of there to get just that much more room uh, to have a little bit more cooling air going around the pipe. That's why I take that, uh, that foam out. If you look at it now, you know, it, it's fairly close. And it, if you can gain another three to four millimeters in that area. It's just that much more cooling air that's gonna go around the pipe through the augmenter and keep, in, keep the pipe cool. So make sure you do that before you bond the rails in. I did the hatch last night. I mean, I just blocked, you know, I took a rasp and I just uh, took the foam out until the, uh, the ridges were pretty much gone. Doesn't take no time at all. And then since I'm losing the skim coat of the foam, what I do is I just take uh, some BVM heat shield and I just brush on one coat and it just kind of seals the foam up again. And let me bring up another point. The guys that are running the K45s, I got a template around here somewhere. The difference between a K45 and an X45 is they're, they're pretty much the same length. They're pretty much the same diameter. It's just that the K45s have these beefy mounts on it, which I don't know why they went overboard with them. I mean, they're 16th inch aluminum, and it, it brings the whole pattern out a lot further than the X45. So it's, it's still doable. It's just that 
what you got to do is you got to cut the foam. Like if you're running the X45, you just got to cut the foam out in this area right here, okay? Until the uh, engine mounts get down to the plywood, then run your screws in. There's still plenty of plywood sticking through the foam to support the K45. It, it, it's no problem at all. It just said it, it's one extra step you got to do. But uh, other than that, the engines are pretty much identical except the mounts. So just have everything spaced four and a half when you, you do cut the foam and it won't be no problem at all. So um, I think that's about all I got for tonight. Uh, it's a pretty short video. And once again, you know, the tailpipe, it's, it's you know, just about the, the perfect length here. I mean, it ends even with the model. I haven't had any heat issues on the prototype at all. Another thing is when I, I ran the, um, uh, the X45 on a bench, with the tailpipe mounted to the, a stand. And believe it or not, this augmenter just works fantastic to where, let me get the thing out of here. So I was running the uh, tailpipe mounted on the test stand too, and I just wanted to see how hot this thing got. And to my surprise, I could hold on to this thing in every location and it was just barely warm. I had a heat gun pointed at it and it was like, you know, 120 degrees, which was nothing. And you know, you point the heat gun at the inside of the tailpipe, you know, it's close to 500. So this augmenter does a tremendous amount. It creates like a low pressure area here and grabs the boundary layer air, and it just forces cooling air through here at all the times. And it works extremely well. Um, I couldn't have been happier with it. I mean, I thought I wouldn't be able to touch this at all. So now, really, I don't even heat shield any of the foam back here because I don't think there's any reason for it. Even the plastic ring back here on this model, you know, this thing's got closing in on 30 flights now. This is just a little piece of ABS plastic that they have, and it's showing no signs of having any heat issues at all. You know, it, it's showing just a little bit of heat here on the augmenter. That's okay. That's what it's there for. So, pipe's working really good. Um, super simple to mount. Do I recommend doing it the way I did it. It's super simple. I mean, you, you can't go wrong. And the mounts are on the same plane as the EDF mounts, and that's what you want. That way the thrust angle is just about right. Uh, the engine fits in there perfectly. I mean, it's simple. You know, you saw how long it took me. It's gonna take you longer to cut the plywood little pattern here and screw it down than it does to uh, cut it. And um, I'm probably gonna glue these in. I'll just roughen these up. I might even put a couple of little holes in here. I'm just gonna E6000 these in, um, and then let it dry overnight, and I'll come back and drill my holes. But make sure you uh, remove this foam first. All right, that's about all I got for tonight. Uh, the next video, uh, engine will be mounted, and we're gonna start installing some of the uh, equipment up front. And uh, I'm to the point now where I can put the tail on, run the uh, the elevator and rudders wires up. Uh, I put a little couple pieces of scrap uh, balsa wood here to keep them from falling down on the engine. You don't want that. And uh, we'll just start wiring everything up and uh, installing equipment. So next time, that's what we're going to do. Um, until then, have a good evening.